Hi there, my name is Chris Gaysford and welcome back to the channel. And in today's video, we are gonna finally install Home Assistant on a Raspberry Pi. Um, I don't always wear a beanie, typically don't actually, but my hair is kind of going crazy as of recent. Um, probably due to some of the world events going on right now, haven't really wanted to go get my hair cut. But besides the fact, we're gonna try to keep this video quick and just real simple on how to get up and running with Home Assistant. All right, so before we get started, um, let's talk about how I'm gonna be doing my Home Assistant setup. So what I typically like to do is I like to dedicate a Raspberry Pi to my Home Assistant. Um, there's a lot of different ways you could get Home Assistant up and running using Docker or um, just using like virtual machines and stuff like that. Um, but where I kind of want to get a way of using like a smart things hub and some of those other things, um, I'm just going to go ahead and just use a Raspberry Pi for it and install the Home Assistant OS on there. Um, and this is a Raspberry Pi 3B+. Plus. Um, and so that's actually the first step. You're gonna need to figure out or know which version of Raspberry Pi you are using. Um, and typically you can just see it right on the board. So it's pretty easy to find, but there are specific versions of the Home Assistant OS depending on the Raspberry Pi you are using. So. I'm just gonna go ahead and get the set down. So let's go ahead and let's actually jump into the project. For us to actually get Home Assistant OS onto our micro SD card, um, which I'm holding here, I don't know if you can see that from the camera, but we're gonna actually need some software to flash the image onto that SD card. Um, so the first thing we're gonna wanna do is go ahead and install some software. Uh, my favorite software to go ahead and flash these images is called Etcher, I believe. Um, it's made by a company called um, Blanche. Oh man, I totally, I totally <laughs> messed that up, but all right. All right, so what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna go ahead and install this Belena Etcher. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but that's all right. Um, it works for Windows, Mac, and Linux OS. I'm currently running Pop OS here. Um, if you wanna see how I set that up, um, there'll be either be a link down below or in the card. Um, we're just gonna go ahead and set, hit download for that. Um, it's gonna download a dot .zip um, and open it with an archive manager. We'll hit okay there. And we can see the install happening over here in the top corner. And it's an app image. Okay, so let's go ahead and extract that. Um, let's just go into our downloads to extract that and show the file. Okay, so this is our app image here. I'm gonna hold off before I launch that. Um, I'm gonna just download the Home Assistant OS first, and then I'll also plug in our SD card. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just hop over to Home Assistant's website. It's this top one here. And then if you just press the getting started here, it's gonna take you through the preferred setup for this, um, which includes a Raspberry Pi 4. Um, I'm using Raspberry Pi 3 here, so um, you definitely don't need to follow this exactly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna press this alternative installation methods here. And we're gonna go ahead and scroll down a little bit. Um, so that they're saying everything that it's technically supported on. Um, and we're looking for Home Assistant OS. We're not looking for it in a Docker container. We want it to be the actual OS that we're gonna be installing onto the Raspberry Pi. And we're gonna go ahead and install this Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus 64-bit. Um, this is asking how we wanna open it. Um, let's Now we have that image um, and that's gonna be useful to us. Um, let's extract that and put it into our downloads like we did with the app image. 
and it's gonna ask us to show the files, but we should already see that in our file explorer here. Once that completes, All right, so it looks like it finished. So if we click show files here, yep, we can see that we have our Hass OS Raspberry Pi 364-bit image. Um, and so what we're gonna do is, I'm just gonna take this guy. Um, this is a little USB adapter for micro SD cards because this computer doesn't have a SD card reader in it. All right, so we went ahead and plugged that in. Um, you might have seen the pop up there. It said Hass OS kernel. Um, I was running Home Assistant previously, but I'm doing a fresh setup for my new home here. Um, so that's fine. The app image we have, it's going to go ahead and just wipe everything on there off anyways. So let's go ahead and launch that app image. Um, if you don't know, app image is just like a program that can run on any version of Linux distro you have. Pretty cool stuff. Um, next thing is really universal and nice to use. Um, so what we're gonna do is the first thing we need to do is select our image. Um, and since we already have our image downloaded there, we're just gonna have that selected. Um, we're gonna select the target. Um, as you can see, we only have one option. So we're gonna go ahead and select that. And then all we have to do is hit flash. Um, it does require a password. Oh boy. Try that again here. All right, there we go. So we're gonna go ahead and let it run. It says it's gonna take about three minutes to do. Um, what it's gonna do, it's gonna go ahead and flash, or it's gonna go ahead and wipe the whatever is on it already, which is my old Home Assistant install. It's gonna go ahead and take that new image that we have and install it to that micro SD card. So that way we can plug it into the Raspberry Pi and get up and going. So this is gonna probably take a few minutes. You can see the ETA bouncing around like crazy there. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'll just skip forward to when that is all done. All right, so it looked like that went ahead and finished. Um, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do here is I'm just gonna go ahead and eject our little drive here. Um, okay, so we're gonna go ahead and eject this. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just get hit out of this little reader here. And then what we need to do is we need to take that flash micro SD card and plug it into the Raspberry Pi we're gonna be using. Just make sure I have the B plus here. Um, and you're gonna plug that in with the little image of the sand disk down. Um, and so that way the connectors are facing up and we're just gonna push that into our Raspberry Pi there, just like that. Make sure it's nice and snug. Then there are ways to get this set up with Wi-Fi if you want to do your home assistant set up that way. Um, I'm somebody that typically prefers to do Ethernet wherever possible. So I have an Ethernet cable that I'm going to go ahead and plug into my Raspberry Pi as well. Um, so we'll go ahead and just plug that in there. And then all we have to do is give it some power. This isn't PoE or anything like that. So we do need to make sure we have um, a power source that is good enough for the Raspberry Pi. So I'm just gonna go ahead and plug this guy into here as well. And you probably are gonna wanna get some sort of case or something for your Raspberry Pi. Um, typically they look something like that. Um, and you can put your Raspberry Pi into there. Um, but if you see a little red light on the Raspberry Pi, um, things are going to start doing its stuff. So as soon as it boots up, it's going to start installing everything it needs to do the home assistant and everything like that. For us to go ahead and get started using this um, and interacting with it, we need to figure out what its IP address is. So 
Um, to do that, I'm just gonna walk, grab my phone here. And since I use Google Wi-Fi, I'm gonna go ahead and just launch the Google Wi-Fi app. Okay, and then inside of your Google Wi-Fi app, you're just gonna go over to your network and go to your devices. And you're gonna look for one that typically sounds like Home Assistant, like we can see right here, it says Home Assistant. If we just click on that, we can see what its IP address is under details, oh, under details, and we can see there. And so what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna take that IP address over to our computer. So what we're gonna need to do is we're just gonna open up a new tab here, and we're just gonna go to that IP address in our browser. In my case, it's 10.10.146, um, and it's gonna be port 8123. And if we go there, yep, we could just see preparing home assistant. Um, looks like it's having a cookie problem, but we'll give it some time. Um, it's gonna take a little while to get set up. As you can see here, about 20 minutes. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'll go ahead, I'll let it run and here in a second, we should be able to actually do some of the setup for it. In the next videos, we're gonna go ahead and we're actually gonna start getting this thing set up. Um, maybe doing some stuff with the mobile app as far as notifications. Um, I have some smart locks that are gonna be over Z-Wave that I'm gonna put in straight into this Raspberry Pi using, um, um, it's actually this guy right here, this AOTech um, Zigbee USB controller hub drive thing. Um, I also have a Conbi 2 which I'm gonna be using to go ahead and do some Zigbee integrations. Um, so I'm really excited about this project and the things I'm gonna be doing with it. Um, if this is something that you're interested in doing, go ahead and hit subscribe and hopefully you'll be watching more of the videos to see how we do some of the stuff and hopefully there's stuff that you wanna learn how to do. Um, if you have any suggestions for what I can do inside of my home, let me know down below. I'll definitely check them out. Um, if you like the video, definitely hit the like button and thanks so much for giving me your time.